What we do here is go back. here <laughs> it's time to watch another prehistoric planet uh trailer and react and comment and all the other things so um i was not expecting this at all actually actually wasn't expecting another trailer period uh because i figured everybody knows what prehistoric planet is at this point right everybody who's interested will know but you know what i'm not fighting it um you know more content is more content and i want to see more dinosaurs <laughs> so uh, here we are. Um, this came out as of as of my recording this about an hour ago, so this is brand new, fresh off the press, fresh off, fresh off the presses, um, fresh reaction. So let's just get right to it, and I'll give any thoughts I have um, afterwards. But I'll try to keep it brief. I've already I've already made a decent probably hour and a half worth of content about Prehistoric Planet already, and I haven't even reviewed the show yet. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'll, I'll keep my comments relatively brief on this one, even though we're getting a full two-minute trailer. Uh, so here we go. Three, two, one, playing it now. Join us for Prehistory Ooh. Planet 2. All right, here we go. Sixty-six million years ago, planet Earth was ruled by dinosaurs. Ooh, that's nice. Both majestic and extraordinary. The mysteries of their lives have been largely undiscovered. Ooh, Yoshi Strike. Until now. Oh, damn, they are huge ones. All right, all right, all right. What is that? Woo! Let's go! <laughs> oh, they're really going for it this time. Join us for a journey like no other. Oh, baby, if I can. There's I always so more to experience and more to discover. Explore five new worlds hmm. filled with danger and adventure. <laughs> oh. All right. This is prehistoric planet 2. Hmm. Only on Apple TV Plus. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> See, here I was thinking, oh, I'm not going to be surprised by anything. Then here we go. <laughs> There's more things. There's always more things, which is great. Um, so let me go through this real quick. So we got five new episodes. Um, they've actually been publicly announced already. Um, they weren't, it wasn't by Apple themselves through like their own marketing materials per se. It was an educational thing, and I'll put it on the screen somewhere. Some educational thing that um, they're using uh, for like school groups and stuff, and so it gives mentions of what the um, five episodes are. And so we've got, if I recall correctly, if they're in order, I think it's islands, and then uh, badlands, swamps, um, oceans, and then finally. Uh, North America, because that's a biome. <laughs> that's a biome, everybody knows. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what they're doing with that one. Maybe they ran out of options, or ran out of ideas. <laughs> um, hopefully that means we'll get some stuff in, like, Appalachia, maybe. Because that'd be kind of cool. Um, I don't think I've ever seen any prehistory content uh, focused <clears throat> on the eastern part of the United States. Um... At least not during the Mesozoic era, so... There are some dinosaurs here, so it'd be cool to see. I think the original Hadrosaurus is from this side of the continent, so... There's that, at least. 
even though it's not the right time period for this show, but uh, still. Anyway, uh, so yeah, moving forward, let's look through some of these. Um, so first of all, we got that Mosasaur breaching shot, which I think they gave away in the promo image that I mentioned for the Oceans clip, but and they show it twice, but you know, I'm still sort of... It's nice to see. It's, it's still a cool shot, admittedly. Um, let's see, we got some Hadrosaurs. I like the fluting on their their um, their beaks. It's a cool detail, um, since we know that Hadrosaur beaks were not the, the, the duckbill thing that everyone originally uh, called them. Because uh, the keratin overlying the bone, because the bone itself is, you know, kind of like this, like flat, but the keratin extension as we know through a bunch of mummies and stuff um that have the that part preserved like the shape of it would be more you know like this sort of thing so it's cool to see it um let's see let's see moving forward moving forward you've got some nice desert shots they've got a nice pachycephalosaurus model this is actually I think the first time pachycephalosaurus is showing up in a documentary like this like properly um i think the only one that's been in the show before this was uh to my recollection prenocephaly in um dinosaur planet and that was back in 2003 um so yeah they got the they've got the more uh spinifer looking models so this whole pachycephalosaurus digimoloch dracorex thing that's a whole topic that can be discussed later. Um, but basically, what the sort of shifting consensus is right now is that there were two species, at least, of what we could call Pachycephalosaurus. One lived a bit earlier, and that's Wyomingensis, and that's the earlier one with the... Um, from fossils we have right now, anyway, with the bigger... Um, relatively bigger-looking dome and smaller horns on the back of its head. Um, but then they got spikier over time. So the spikes actually grew um, over the course of the of Pachycephalosaurus's existence. And so that's where you get what we call Stygimoloch, um, which could also be called Pachycephalosaurus at this point. And I think that's a sort of emerging consensus. Um, and so they're going with that model because um, they're still calling it Pachycephalosaurus in the promotional material. So I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be Pachycephalosaurus spinifer, which is not an officially named species yet, but it probably will be in a couple years. I don't think they're going to get specific as mentioning you know, the species names because they only did that for T-Rex, but um, either way, there you have it. Um, it looks very nice. It looks very nice. The shot of Nanuxaurus is really cool. Just like a very dynamic perspective here. Um, let's see, there's more sauropods, the triceratops, these massive horned triceratops. Now, I think these are actually supposed to be triceratops horridus, which lived a little bit earlier than triceratops prorsus. Um, I'm saying this based on the horn arrangement, because horridus, if I recall correctly, has its the the main way to tell them apart is where their their nose horn is. People usually go by the the shape of the brow horns, the ones above the eyes, but um, that's actually not a very reliable factor because that varies a lot. Like the shape of the horns varies a lot throughout the age of Triceratops as it gets older, um, and also there's a lot of individual variation. Um, so the safer way is actually to look at where the nose horn is, and in Horridus, which is the one you usually see depicted. Um, I think that one has a smaller nose horn that is closer to the center of the, it's like higher up the, up the snout. And that's what it looks like these guys have here. And then the slightly later species that it evolved into, uh, Prorsus, which is a species you see in, um, in Saurian, for example, um, they have much bigger nose horns and they're further forward down the snout. Um, so these ones look more like Horridus. Um, it doesn't make too much of a difference species-wise, I mean, time-wise. I mean, it does make a little bit of difference because we know Horridus existed before Prorsus did. Um, by how much 
is still sort of being figured out, but it's within a million years or so. So it might not be squarely 66 million years ago, but around the same time, a um, little bit earlier. But I mentioned that because we know Triceratops and Pachycephalosaurus lived with each other, at least in the Hell Creek Formation in Western North America. So if they have Horridus living alongside uh, Pachycephalosaurus spinifer or Stygimoloch spinifer, which is the later species within its lineage, um, there might be a bit of a mismatch there. Um, but that's the only thing I'll say to that. I could very well be, you know, not in the know anymore since I stopped following Hell Creek paleontology as closely <laughs> in the last year or two. So maybe there's there's more I don't know. Um, I'm not trying to say the show is wrong, but it's, it's something I've I'd noticed just now. But regardless, um, the scene looks like it's going to be a very fun time. Uh, I love how the horns are just absolutely huge on these. There's like a handful of Triceratops species, or not species, of uh, individual, or like fossil individuals, um, that have huge horns. And that's just the... By horns, I'm referring to just the bony parts of the horns, not the keratin extension that would make the horns even longer already. Um, so I like that they're really going for um, this big horn look, like really showing how, how much the keratin would extend, or at least could extend, you know, the, the length of these horns. Um, and also we're going get to get, get a decent amount of, like, actual fighting in this series, too. I mean, we got fighting in the previous the previous season, but, like, we're going to get, you know, Triceratops fighting each other, we got Pachycephalosaurus fighting each other, um, we got a bunch of, like, big action scenes, like, hunting scenes and stuff, like, chases and whatnot, um, so, yeah, I think they're, it looks like they're really going for it this time, um, which is, which is cool. I remember that being a complaint, actually, um, from a couple of people that I've seen, um, saying there isn't enough wasn't quite enough, I guess, violence, and not in terms of like the baby eating violence, but like, it, <laughs> like just straight on like dinosaur fighting dinosaur, like big dinosaur fighting big dinosaur type violence. So I mean, if you want that, it looks like you're gonna get some of it here, um, this time around. Um, let's see, we got okay. So this is the scene that was spoiled earlier in the promo material um, by uh, MPC. I think it was MPC doing the, doing the visual effects, yeah. Because um, they put out, like I said, they put out some behind the scenes sort of making of footage and they included stuff from season one, but it also included stuff from this scene with what I've now discovered is I believe Isosaurus is the name of the Indian uh, sauropod here. Um, there's actually a bone bed, or not a bone bed, but a fossil locality in India uh, that was recently published a couple months ago, I think, um, that was looking at this site that I'm pretty sure this scene is going to be based on that has, like, I think five or six different types of sauropods there based on just the kind of eggs that they have. And they were all based around a volcano or volcanic area near, I think, the Deccan Traps, which is a volcanic region in India that existed at the time in the late Cretaceous that at one point was thought to have been the reason the dinosaurs actually went extinct. Um, but you know, now it's the consensus is more like, yeah, we know, we know there was an asteroid that hit, so that was probably the main thing. Uh, and the volcanic activity was probably more localized in terms of its like overall effects, um, as far as like, you know, harmful extinction type things are concerned. But we also know that sauropods in particular liked using geothermal, um, hotspots, uh, to incubate their eggs. So... Uh, that's what this scene will probably be depicting. And the patterning is really nice on these, I'm just noticing. So yeah, we see them like hatching out of the dirt and stuff. Um, so that'll be cool. This next shot here is of a Mosasaur that I was actually hoping would show up in this sh in this film. Um, well, it might not actually be the, the, the Mosasaur in question, and I'm forgetting the name of it right now. But it's a newly discovered one that has teeth shaped like a cookie cutter shark, essentially. And so the thought is that, you know, it was doing something particularly different uh, than other mosasaurs. And to be clear, like, mosasaurs weren't all doing the same thing 
in terms of like the kind of prey they were eating. There was a lot of actually of diversity within mosasaurs. Um, I'm no expert on it. I'm just sort of reading about it and discovering it myself recently. But uh, yeah, so this is one of the more extreme examples and newly found examples. And it was a small animal too. I think it was only like maybe a meter or two, maybe three meters long tops. So a small mosasaur. Um, so yeah, that'd be nice to if that's what this ends up being. We have more of the bait ball scene. We got Velociraptor back again. Now, what is this? This looks like a Truodontid of some sort. Um, but I have no idea what it could be, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, looking at it closely doesn't help me either. So I'm gonna, and actually, maybe it's got the coloration of the... It's got coloration similar to the Truodont from the previous season, the one that was using the fire. So that might be what this is. Um, so I'm going to guess this is like the North America sequence, or the North America episode. Um, what context? Like, what what is North America supposed to be? I'm still cons I'm still lost on that. I've seen some thoughts floating around that this is going to be the episode that actually ends, <laughs> not only ends the series but like puts a period on the on the series by having the meteorite uh, at least mentioned at the end because uh, the meteorite did hit in North America. So I guess that would be a way to bookend. <laughs> to bookend the series, especially since season one ended on a very, I guess, almost uplifting and sort of like, uh, sort of like a to be continued sort of note. Um, not necessarily saying, you know, the series is going to continue, even though we knew, it, or even though they knew it was going to be uh, continuing on to a second season, but just in terms of like, we're not killing the dinosaurs, we're going to let you just sort of, we're going to leave them, um, without the asteroid for once because <laughs> that always seems to happen in every Cretaceous in every dinosaur program actually pretty much there's always the asteroid at the end um, and people were like relieved that prehistoric planet didn't do that but now there's a little bit of an inkling that they might end up doing it this time around so <laughs> I mean if they do it'll at least be cool to see um, the way the asteroid impact actually played out is uh, something that's still it's still being learned, but there's a lot that a lot of depictions don't show correctly, um, and so I'd imagine that this show would do it properly if they go that route. Um, but then again, it'll probably just be like a blip, like very very bookend. Um, probably a blink and you'll miss it sort of thing. Like, I don't think they'll have a whole segment on it necessarily. Um, and besides, that's going to be the purview of a whole other show um, that uh, Netflix is... No, Netflix? No, no, no not Netflix. That uh, NBC is producing uh, with Tim Haynes, but I'll talk about that at a later point. But yeah, there's another big dinosaur program coming up, and it's going to be all about extinctions. So you'll get those <laughs> rendered in glorious high-definition within the next year or two, regardless of whether it comes here or not. <laughs> uh, but anyway, moving forward. Ooh, baby, baby pack. No, well, maybe, well, these could be baby pachycephalosaurs, but they could also just be some sort of Asian pachycephalosaur, like prenocephaly or, well, maybe not prenocephaly, because that's too soon, but something a little later. Um, there were pachycephalosaurs that did not have horns on the back of their heads and this is one of those um there's actually i think a new one that was announced a couple of weeks ago from hell creek that was more like this um i didn't get a chance to read the paper in full but i saw the headline mentioning it so um at least showing more pachycephalosaur diversity is always cool especially since they did not show up in the first season at all and i was like it took me a minute to realize they weren't there <laughs> um, but i'm glad they are here Let's see, we got, I think this is Tarkia here. I guess they're fighting over water or something. The breaching season, or breaching thing. Uh, we got Beelzebufo again, probably defending his nest from, or his, his babies from this curious titanosaur. Uh, we got some more dromaeosaurs in the snow. They look like very cold adapted ones too. They don't look like the same ones we've seen before. So this is probably a new species. Um, 
This will be a fun chase scene, probably. This looks like Thesalosaurus. Yeah, a Thesalosaur of some sort over ice. Nanosaurus hunting. Uh, oh yeah, he's definitely gonna catch that. <laughs> uh, that'll be an interesting, interesting scene. There's a lot of chase scenes going on here. Like I said, this scene looks more. This season looks like it's gonna be a lot more like action oriented. Um, ooh, it's a nice shot of these. Oh, oh, we're back in the in the in the in the mech, I think, because these are the sauropods we saw last season. So the the so-called Mongolian Titan, which was a dinosaur that we only know exists be literally because of a footprint. <laughs> um, and then these other ones here, which they never named, but I guess they're going to name them here. Um, I have t two guesses as to what they are, but I don't know how to say either of their names, so I'll, I'll write them here um, and continue on. <laughs> Now, what is this guy? Some sort of maybe Truodont or some, some other small Dromaeosaur uh, fly hunting like the Cryptile <laughs> from uh, from the future is wild. Someone made a meme about that and that it didn't click to me. It didn't click for me until I saw the meme like, oh, it's doing the exact same behavior and it looks like the same habitat too. Um... Some of these shots, I will say, I mean, there's probably, again, a case of them using CGI from earlier in the rendering uh, process, because they're not as good. I mean, they're still good, like, they're beautiful, and I couldn't make anything like this. But, um, yeah, I'm noticing there's a little bit more dodgy footage here, but again, that's probably just stuff they do all the time for CGI-heavy products anyway. So I'm not concerned about it, and even if it did look like this, like, I wouldn't... I wouldn't, you know, take points off necessarily. Um, let's see. Arctic plesiosaurs. That's actually something we know existed, either Arctic or or Antarctic. Um, we know there were, there were Arctic mosasaurs or sub, not sub. Ant, there were Antarctic mosasaurs. Um, was it as cold as it was down there? I mean, maybe. I haven't actually heard much research about it, but uh, they did do a lot of climate modeling for this show, so they would have an idea of what the habitats were like and what um, you know different regions of the world were actually like in terms of their climate and such. Um, and it hasn't been published yet, so this is like brand new research that was commissioned specifically for this show that hasn't been published yet, and I'm hoping it will be soon. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure where what these are, where they're supposed to be. That's a, now this is interesting. I don't want to speculate too much on this, but this looks like we got Velociraptor, I think, stealing eggs or feeding its babies eggs or something to that effect. Baby Velociraptor are cute. Rhodosaurus going up the volcano. <laughs> I'm glad that they were back. <laughs> um, what, what are they called again? Um, Zamoxis has returned, and he's on a raft. <laughs> Hopefully they don't get eaten by something. Uh, this would be a cool scene for a crocodile to show up in. Where the heck were the crocodiles last season? <laughs> I was going to say this in my proper review of the first season, but then that was before I found out season two was coming, and I was like, let me just review the whole thing at once, so that's what's going to happen uh, as far as that's concerned. But anyway, there were no crocodiles in season one even though there were plenty of crocodilomorphs that lived at this time that you could feature, and I'm hoping are still going to be featured, especially if they do islands, because um, that's where uh, Simosuchus is from, the little uh, bulldog croc. Um, I would love to see him show up again. Or not again, show up, period. <laughs> um, and then in North America, you had like th at least three different types of crocodiles that were kind of different enough from the modern ones that you could be like, you know, here's some diversity for you. There's also a bunch of not a croc, croc looking things like champsosaurs and whatnot, um, and then on the like the the islands around Europe and whatnot. I think both, yeah, both the islands and I think, excuse me, both Europe and Madagascar, because we know they're going back to Madagascar at least once. Um, there were allodapatsuchids, so these are like terrestrial predatory crocodiles or croc relatives. 
Um, so there was a good diversity of ancient crocodilians, uh, large and small and of different body shapes that could be shown and they have not shown any of them so far. Um, so fingers crossed we get at least one this time around. See, they're doing ammonites. Ammonites are getting a lot of attention in this one and I love it. Um, we have at least two, maybe three different kinds of ammonites in this scene. I know nothing about them, so I would be happy to be told what these are. And uh, I'm excited to learn more about them. Oh, there's oh they got the trombone looking ones, the, the paperclip ones. <laughs> so there's, there's the straight shelled ones, there's the coiled ones, and then there's the the paperclip ones. <laughs> All in one in one shot. Um, so yeah, if, if if these are here, all I'm saying is, where are the Crocs? <laughs> Give me some Crocs. And then of course we got this scene that I mentioned in the last one, where let's say so T Rex is taking on or being challenged by two different uh, or two uh, Quetzalcoatlus. The coloration of the T-Rex is different here than the ones in the previous season. I'm assuming it's just going to be regional variation. I'm not going to like extrapolate a whole thing about a different species or something. Though there were, or might be, another southern species of Tyrannosaurus um, that was previously referred to, I think, as like Alamo, Alamo Tyrannus or something like that. Because I'm pretty sure the sauropod here is Alamosaurus and they're by like the, they're in the Texas area, I think. Um, like the Texas sort of Mexico region um, because that's where Alamosaurus and Quetzalcoatlus specifically are from and there are large Tyrannosaur fossils known from there but at least their their classifications have been back and forth as to whether they're Tyrannosaurus rex whether they are another species of Tyrannosaurus or if they're their own genus um, like I said they were previously called Alamo Tyrannus I think but then that got uh, lumped back into T-Rex for one reason or another. Um, it was actually named uh, Alamo Tyrannus Brinkmanni uh, in honor of um, a man I used to work with slash under um, at the Peabody Museum. Um, so he's a little, <laughs> he's a little, I think a little salty about um, the species being sunk, but if they resurrect the species again, he'll have his, his Tyrannosaur back. Um, I mean, I personally don't really believe in eponyms per se, but you know, if they exist, it, he'd be a nice person to, to have it named after. <laughs> um, but yeah, point being, it's a new looking Tyrannosaur model and I'm glad they're doing, at least showing like regional variation if this is a T-Rex. Um, Cause you know, Species don't look the same across different regions, especially if they have a wide range. So I'm perfectly fine with it looking a little different here. Um, which also brings, to, uh, brings up, uh, I mentioned Hatsagopteryx in the previous uh, trailer reaction and I wasn't sure what was going on with the colors. Um, and I realized immediately after recording that that animals can change their entire breeding season uh, plumage um, like they'll change their entire patterning, not just like change what the colors are, but change like stripes become like bold patches and things like that. So that was, that's what was going on there, I'm pretty sure. Um, so it wasn't another species or something. Um, just wanted to address that offhandedly. Um, so yeah, and that is, that is everything. That is Prehistoric Planet 2. Um, comes out May 22nd, so like about three weeks from now. So I will be obviously watching it, and this time around I will actually review it. <laughs> um, and potentially in more ways than one. Uh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, we'll, I'll, 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 I'll keep you posted. <laughs> and that is all I have for now. Uh, so thank you for watching. Uh, if you stayed all the way through, Thanks for watching all the way through. Hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, many thanks. Stay safe. And I'll uh, see you next time.